Hello and welcome back to Niche Tea, where we talk about drama happening in communities you may not be a part of. Last time we talked about the very perplexing situation in the cosplay community coming out of Katsukon 2024. Today we're talking about something much lighter than that and actually probably one of the most positive communities. I don't even know that I would call this drama because there's just literally no negativity in it at all. We're talking about the fountain pen community today. It's so much fun looking into this. I'm tagging below a creator named Aiden Bernal who has an entire account completely focused around his passion around pens and fountain pens. His video is the one I got tagged in the most that initially got me onto this story. I found a few other sources, but he has a very complete view of this as well, and his account is really interesting. So please go check him out. First for some setup, I'm gonna assume most people know what a pen is. Odds are, even if you aren't super familiar with them, you have probably also seen a fountain pen at some point in your life. Fountain pens differ from ballpoint pens, the standard ones we use to write with, in a number of ways. Most notably, there is a big difference in the tips of the pens, right? One literally has a ball point um, and the other one has this kind of pointed thing that's actually referred to as a nib. There are all different types of nibs. There are actually even roller nibs and they pull ink out of the pen itself in a different way than ballpoint pens do. Fountain pens, I believe, also use water-based ink where ballpoint pens use oil-based. Fountain pens are also far less likely to come disposable like ballpoint pens usually do. Instead, folks who use them will buy separate pots of ink and refill the fountain pen with different types of ink so you can choose what ink you like and continue to use the pen that you figured out is the best for you for whatever purpose you're using it for. Fountain pens are traditionally what you use for more artistic script style writing like calligraphy. And there are different types of fountain pens that have different benefits and different nibs that do different things. Aiden has a video pinned to the top of his page of him using a split nib on a fountain pen and it is literally mesmerizing. Look at this shit. Look at this. I have watched that video no fewer than 50 times. It is literally mesmerizing and I am consistently blown away by the way the ink moves and spreads out without spreading out in the middle of the nib, if that makes sense. Now the brand at the center of today's story sells both fountain pens and fountain pen accessories as well as produces and releases ink. This brand is called Lamy. They're somewhat of a staple in the community from what I can see. One of their specific pens is called the Lamy Safari and it seems to be kind of a staple option that most people have at least one of. It's very well rated. I see it in a lot of like top five, top 10 lists for fountain pens. Now, because it's very popular and consumerism, it seems like basically every year, Lamy releases limited edition versions of both the Lamy Safari fountain pen itself, as well as associated ink colors that go along with those. So, what happened? In 2016, the Lamy Safari limited edition color for both pen and ink was called Dark Lilac, and that was one of the most beloved inks that apparently has ever come out. The ink being so well loved combined with the fact that it was limited edition means that by now, eight years later, if you can find it somewhere, it's going for hundreds of dollars. Like I found forum alerts for it showing up on eBay. It's holy grail status for the community. I found a number of different reasons why people like it so much and that includes that its base color is very difficult to recreate and it's like a very beautiful purple. It also has a gold sheen to it, which is very difficult to do with purple inks is my understanding. And I've heard people call out that you can shade it from very, very light and clearly purple down to nearly black. It's so dark and that's uncommon with purples apparently. So it's very loved, it's very sought after. Well, recently Lamy announced the 2024 Safari limited edition colors for two pens and two inks. One of which is a dark purple color reminiscent of 2016 Dark Lilac, which is named Violet Blackberry. People in the community are excited. They're like, oh, it's probably an homage or you know something close to it because they know people liked it so much, this will be cool. But then some people notice that in Europe, retailers who are stocking Lamy products are stocking the limited edition now, and ink is not called Violet Blackberry, it's called Dark Lilac. And so people ask them and are like, is this the same as Violet Blackberry? And they're just calling it Dark Lilac in the EU for some reason. And the retailers come back and are like, no, Violet Blackberry is unique and special to just the US and the EU is getting Dark Lilac. And then people think, okay, well maybe they're also then 
adding dark lilac to the regular line. Aiden points out in his video that Lamy has done this before. They did it with a particular turquoise color that started out as special edition and then was liked enough that they added it to the standard release line. So then people reach out to the head of sales for Lamy in the US to get more clarification. The head of US sales responds confirming that dark lilac is a permanent new addition to their incline. And most importantly, he confirms that the dark lilac formulation that's coming out now in 2024 is the exact same as the formulation from 2016 that was so beloved. He also confirms that Violet Blackberry is a completely different color for the special edition for 2024 release. However, he contradicts what we've heard from the EU retailers in saying that it is actually a global release. It's not limited to the US. Now, this is the part where I thought people were going to be mad because I thought it was going to be a situation where there was a very big market for this very limited edition dark lilac and their market prices were going to be screwed over by the fact that there was a new 2024 release and it basically was just going to make it available to everyone. It's going to bring down the price. That hasn't happened at all. Literally everyone was just happy to have more of the dark lilac. Y'all are so healthy, but by this point, people have started receiving their Violet Blackberry and 2024 dark lilac and they are comparing them to each other and to 2016 dark lilac and they are not the same. The most noticeable difference seems to be the sheen. As I had mentioned that 2016 dark lilac has a gold sheen to it. The 2024 is very green, like very green. Strong Marvel villain energy going on with 2024 dark lilac. The base color for 2024 dark lilac is also noticeably pinker than the 2016. I actually think the violet blackberry looks closer to the 2016 dark lilac than the 2024 dark lilac does, but that's just me. But truthfully, neither of the new releases have that very, very rich purple base that the 2016 does. Then literally like four days ago, someone gets final confirmation from a contact at Lamy in Germany where the ink is actually made that while they did try to 100% exactly replicate 2016 dark lilac in the 2024 reproduction, there's a specific red dye that they used in 2016, which is no longer available. And so they weren't able to 100% replicate it, which explains the differences people were seeing and solidifies 2016 dark lilac as the holy grail ink that it always has been. Again, the so people were bummed for sure, but the whole community that I could see was very understanding. Usually when you have a community that is this intricately analyzing every part of the thing that they're into, you get a lot more emotional reactions to this type of stuff. But the most I saw were what I thought were pretty respectful criticisms of the marketing strategy. Like you should not have had your retailers being the one leading the charge for this release, knowing how important this was you know, for a lot of people, especially people who may have missed the original Dark Lilac. But that I can see nobody's raging, nobody's calling for a boycott, nothing crazy like that. People are literally like, yeah, this wasn't the cleanest thing, but we understand, we know you weren't like intentionally trying to deceive us or anything. So let me just say, I am so proud of you guys. Other fandoms, please take note. Sometimes people try their best and shit just happens.